a little Clinton fear on. Thanks for joining in. We're just going to let everybody kind of get settled in and then I'll start the instruction. Welcome to episode one of Bald Ross. I'm not a camera guy. I'm not a microphone guy, but I love to paint. So grateful for having you all. You can work colors. You can paint on anything. So we're going to break it down, make it simple. Anyone can paint all abilities, all ages. What's up, Randall? How you doing, Janet? I'm gonna let a few more people get on here before I start the actual instruction. Thanks for coming out. Feel free to invite some people. If you're in my art group, throw it in there. I'm really low tech, so I didn't want to mess with anything. If you guys can share it on wherever you feel appropriate, my art page, uh, the private art group if you're a member, whatever you're feeling. What's up, Greg? How you doing, Shauna? I have the camera facing regular, so it's not a mirror image of what I'm doing, and I have to explain everything backwards. So uh, bear with me here. What's up, Christina? How you doing, Janet? Erica, welcome. <clears throat> We're listening to a little live show from Clinton Ferrum. We'll start here any minute. Bear with me. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. I'm very low tech. I'm scared just doing this, but we got to all adapt, as Pato would say, right? All right. Let's get going, guys. Our first tools. Ruler and a pencil. Um, if you're working with a 16 by 20 canvas, you're going to want to make a mark four inches up on either side. Um, this is 16 tall, 4 from the bottom, so depending on your canvas size, the bottom section will be exactly 1 quarter, so you can do the math, make that happen. Stoked to be painting with you guys. Just do a little mark here, 4 inches, 4 inches, little tiny pencil mark on the side. <clears throat> little blue tape, masking tape, scotch tape, whatever you got. Put that across here, you line up one side, drop it on there. Uh, you're going to want to get some friction going here on the tape, get this top line nice and stuck. Hey, thanks for joining in everyone. 22 people already. Just gonna start slow in case everybody needs to catch up. A lot of people are prepped already. 16 by 20 canvas. I did a four inch mark. Put the tape, we're gonna be painting above the tape. Then I have this handy pizza pan. You guys can do any circle here. It can be a smaller circumference, whatever you're feeling. Uh, I'm going for the big planet. The idea here is to get approximately two inches from the top and then make a mark. So it doesn't have to be perfect, just eyeball it. You know, look, try to center it a little bit. Just want to leave a little space up here about two inches. So when you're tracing this, if you're on an easel, it's a little more difficult. You might want to set it flat. Um, but I want to be able to show you guys. When you're tracing it, go like this two or three times in the same area and work your way across so we can create a nice bold line. And we're going to paint over the line and we want that to come back, okay? So this is a 13 to f almost 14 inch pizza pan right here. Anything will work. If you want to go a little smaller, go for that. If you have a smaller canvas, use a plate, a bowl, or whatever you have handy. Just to show you guys real quick. 
on my easel. I'm using a little piece of duct tape here to keep it from flying around. I can't get behind my canvas. So, just using that for security. So basically you have the tape line, we have our circle drawn, and we can start painting. Now you guys can improvise any colors with me. I'm going to do the sample that was on the page, but feel free to do a little reggae style. Alright, 40 people painting. Love it man, thank you guys. What's up Denny, what's up Steven? Like I was saying, I have to uh, face the camera normal, so I can't really interact with you guys. I'll just keep coming around and chatting. And uh, when Lisa gets home, she can help relay questions if you have any. Okay, guys. Our first tool will be this super expensive kitty brush. It's basically any kind of stencil brush or round brush. If you don't have something exactly like this, anything with a little substantial bristle at the top will be perfectly fine, okay? Ideally, you want this dry. If you already got your brushes wet, um, just set it aside, dry it on your napkin, all right? I have a cup of water and a little napkin. Basically, throughout the whole day, I'm just gonna be flipping this to a clean side as we go so we have a clean surface. I have two cups of water and these are our tools for the day. I have three size angle brushes right here. The longer you've been painting the larger the brush these all do the exact same thing. It just depends on your skill level and your experience on creating a, a pointed line or being able to blend with these. I have a basic little fan brush here and this little detail brush. I probably won't need it, but some people, to make a small line, it's good to have a little tiny brush. Okay? Break it down. I also have a palette knife. You guys can use a plastic knife, a kitchen knife, whatever, whatever you need. Um, it's not really that important. The size of the brushes aren't that important either. We're just here to have fun. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys joining in. We'll get started. I'm starting with this neon purple. It's like a plum color. If you don't have this particular color, um, you can add pink to regular purple with a little bit of white. Or you can just use lavender or any light purple. So if you use a dark purple, you can make three shades of it by adding a little more white to each pile. So if you're trying to get different shades of purple, this one's really nice. It's sort of a plum pink color. Almost like a hot pink, but it's purple. What's up, Tommy? How you doing, Michael? Yeah, stoked to paint with you guys. All right, let's keep it simple. Start with this little kitty brush, stencil brush, round brush, whatever you have, okay? Tapping the brush like this and filling it. I'm just gonna work around the line here. Now make sure you don't leave white between the purple paint and the line. So ideally we wanna paint over our pencil line. Don't worry. If you go pretty heavy on the paint, this color is light enough to where you'll be able to see your line still. It's our little cheater method so we can make the circle later without trying to eyeball it. I'm just tapping. And I'm spinning the brush like this and changing the angle of it. So as we progress out, we don't want to be leaving spots like this. Just Spot, 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 same, same exact mark every time. So just mix it up. You're gonna get different textures. 
We don't want a lot of white showing through. We want to be the pretty predominant here. This particular color glows in the dark. So this is going to give us a really cool fiery ring around the planet. What's up Kylie? What's up Michael? Yeah, 50 people. Welcome. Somebody tag Clinton Fair on where we're jamming out. I watched his uh, live thread the other day. It's amazing. The, our next bucket list item is to paint with Clinton up in Washington. So as you can see, I worked a ring around here and I'm kind of putting a few little arms out like this. This neon paint, even behind regular paint, will glow subtly, so I want to come out a little bit. You can almost imagine it sort of like a sun with rays coming out. If you've ever seen like the, the NASA images of, of the sun with all the spouts and fire coming off of it. Similar idea. If you're painting flat, this part's a lot easier because we're tapping the painting. If you're painting on an easel, just keep an eye on the back leg because it's going to start to push forward and wiggle. Work my way all the way around. Now, ideally, we don't want any white. We want to be able to. We want to bring that color over the pencil line without any white. You know, we're having fun. How about you? Yeah. Yes, uh, this one is Marvin Art. Right. Well, got hit with an ad, but that's what we have to do to listen to Clinton. What's so up, John? Alright, so, so it's got the neon going here. Centra, feed yourselves today. Let's be honest. Because I can't get to the back of my easel, I'm going to tape my canvas straight down here so it doesn't fall off in the middle of this. So try making it smaller, and you'll be surprised at how easily starting small can Sorry for the ad, guys. Start stopping with Nicorette. We'll be back. There we go. Okay, so if you guys are tuning in late, it's a neon purple that I picked up. Decor art, Americana. Okay. Working our way around our pencil line. Four inch line here. This is a 16 by 20 canvas, so a quarter of the way up. Now I'm going to use a prism violet. It's more like a plum color. This particular brand has Liquitex, but you can make this color. If you don't have this plum color, Take purple, add white to it, and make yourself two, three different shades of purple. So now we're going to do the same process with the plum. We're not cleaning the brush. We're not getting this brush wet either. You don't need to clean it right now. We're just going to keep working our way out. Try not to paint below your tape line. If you do, it's no big deal. If you did that by accident, just wipe it off right now. We can fix it later, no mistakes. Now, I'm gonna work my way around with this plum color. Overlapping. Once again, I'm spinning the brush and changing the angle of the brush so I'm not making the same mark every time. This is just a simple kitty brush. Uh, they have fancy stencil brushes you could pay 10 bucks for, but I've never been one for high-end materials. My first few paintings were a palette knife, an angled brush, and a golf ball. So work our way around here with the plum. And as you tap the color, there's going to be less paint on your brush. But you want to fan it out here into this open space a little bit. 
and overlap the neon. A little stronger in some places, a little lighter in others. Give you guys a quick look at the last class painting we did. Real quick look. That's where we're going, but just follow along step by step. It's a little math project and we'll make it happen. So you're definitely not going to pull this off in 27 minutes like Bob Ross. Might be here a couple hours. But that's okay. I will probably go a little faster than you guys can handle. Which is fine because you can always follow along and watch the replay. I'm going to come in here a little bit too. Drop a little bit of this color randomly here. A little ring there. Alright, technology is working for us. Yeah, Steven, neon pink's good. It's real close to pink. If you guys have pink, you can add that in the, in the background, no problem. Now I'm going to go, without cleaning my brush again, I'm going to go back to our first color. I'm going to pull that out a little bit and overlap. Just make it a little thicker. This neon color is going to make everything glow. Alright. Don't clean this yet. You just wipe it on your napkin. Now I'm going with this. this master's touch acrylic I really like. It looks black on the palette. It's called violet. It's just a dark purple. You can add white to many different piles and lighten it up. Doing the dark purple here, as you can see, it almost looks black. But trust me, when it hits the canvas, it's not gonna be black. At this point as well, I go crazy with the paint, no big deal. We can use all this in the bottom as well. Give myself a little bit of white as well, okay? Didn't clean this brush, it still has all the purple on it. I'm gonna go into the dark purple. I'll work my way around the ring again. And occasionally bring a little arm into the planet here. If you're really heavy on the paint, just push it around and thin it out on the brush so it's not real heavy in one little spot. Okay, dark purple here. You can see it lightens up on the palette and on the canvas. Goes on real dark. If you're feeling like it's too dark, you can grab just a touch of white and mix that in as you're going. Grab a touch of white. Bring it over to your pile, lighten it up. I'm gonna get a little lavender color. Bring a little arm in here and there. Okay. Oh, sorry for the ad, guys. I'm running Clinton Farron on YouTube. I just did a, uh, a mural and discovered this concert he did in France and really got me in the flow, so 
I've been listening to it a lot. We're working our way around with the dark purple here. Our focus now is trying to get this transition happening. So light purple, plum, dark purple. It probably appears a lot darker than it is to you guys on camera. We're a little low tech here. I've been meaning to do this live classes or recorded live classes for a long time, but honestly, I didn't have the courage. So here we are. Just uh, roll with the punches. Um, if you guys are down to throw down a tip, gratuity, donation, whatever you want to call it, I have the links in the description. I'll put them in the comments later. Really appreciate it. You'll not only be helping my family, but I'm going to pay some of that money forward and purchase merch and send other musicians and artists donations here in the coming week. We've got the dark purple there. Now we're going to work our way all the way out with the dark purple. We'll go pretty heavy here in this corner section and a little bit down here on the tape. Okay? It probably looks black to you guys. It's just dark purple. Slight turn in right here. It's a very subtle angle on the on the thing, but with the uh, roundness of it all. It really has a cool effect with just that slight angle there instead of just a perfect half moon. We have about three quarters of the of the moon there. Working my way around, dark purple. I'm gonna go all the way out now to the corner, cover this whole top part. Once again, spinning, different angles. I just left a little bristle there. You can grab it like that. Or you can grab a knife. If you don't feel like getting messy, take it off. We haven't got the brush wet yet. Still just making this happen. Going heavy with the dark purple all the way off the corner here. So if you guys are a little behind me, the idea here is to not have obvious lines. So we kind of blend the colors as we go. Bring a little dark into the light. And the other way around. We're gonna take our time here. Hopefully the phone will last. Facebook will keep the technology rolling. Still going. What's up, Michael V? How you doing, Lauren? Purple. It's purpley, Michael. It's very purpley. You can think purple. Purple and aqua seem to be the uh, the most popular colors for 2019. Let's see how it goes this year. This all has us in a sense of wonder and stress, but. I haven't painted in a week, just wasn't feeling it, so I'm glad you guys could be here with me and sending our love out from the show camp, everyone stay safe, and stay home, and get through this, as an artist there's nothing worse than the unknown. So I've been dealing with it. I can't say that I haven't been stressed and worried, but you have to 
make the best of each situation, and here we are. So while I was rambling, I got a little bit of black. Any black will work, just not ivory black. Uh, it's a little bit too opaque, so any kind of black in the dark gray or black range. And I'm working slightly down here and on the corner. So I'm starting heavy, solid black in the corner, and letting it wear off the brush, and creating the illusion of this corner following the roundness of the planet. Slightly like this. Little tiny bit at the top. Got the black here. I haven't cleaned this brush yet. Now I'm get on this corner again. I'm gonna reload the brush. I'm gonna start heavy black in the corner. Make like a triangle. And then slowly fade it out as it thins on the bristle. And get a little bit down here too. Create the illusion of this outside circle. Okay. Now I'm gonna clean the brush. Paint's drying pretty good already. Clean the brush, dried it off as well as I can, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of flare here with the little neon and bring a little, little octopus arm style coming out like this. Very lightly tapping in and just adding a, layering a little light purple over the top of all this. Imagine little arms coming out. Looking forward to seeing your guys' paintings afterwards. Feel free to tag me and take pictures of the fam. Post it on my page or the event page or wherever you're feeling. I'm just grateful that you're all painting with me and that technology is allowing this to happen. About 12 days ago, my business, except for Murals and custom orders came to a screeching halt. All the shows are canceled. All the venues where I teach are canceled. All my students are canceled. I haven't seen David in a couple weeks. So just trying to make the best of it. So light purple, plum, dark purple, black. We're looking good here. Now you want to clean this brush, set it aside. The only role I think in painting is just keeping your tools ready to use again, so you probably won't need this again, but just want to clean it, set it aside so it doesn't dry up and I can use it again. Now I'm taking a cup of water. I'm taking a cup of water, my fan brush, and a little bit of white paint here. Try to set this in front of the camera so you guys can see it. Bringing a decent amount of water here to this white paint. And making a nice thin pool. I don't know if you guys can see that. Thinning out the paint here. Now what we're gonna do in a minute, you guys won't be able to see my painting happening because I have to lay it flat, but we're gonna hold this palette knife, plastic knife, any kind of knife that you might have available. I have this fan brush here. I'm, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna hold this in my left hand and keep it flat and stiff. I'm gonna rake down like this. My work area is a mess, so it doesn't matter. So we're going to rake down, I'm moving the fan brush down, and the paint's going down, little spots of paint, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to put stars up here. So if you're working on an easel, 
If you want to find a flat area, maybe an old towel, tablecloth, lay it flat. Um, if you're in a messy area, don't worry about it. But ideally, we want to get the canvas flat to do this because we don't want these stars to run and become rain or drips. So I'm going to drop my easel back here. flip mine around so I can get to the sky. So flip it around like this. And I'm going to throw stars here. Alright, what's up Sarah, Celia? Thanks for tuning in. 60 people. So you can kind of see the sky that I just did. My painting is upside down right now. You can use your fan brush if you don't have a fan brush. You can use an angle brush like this, a larger style house brush, anything with fairly stiff bristle, okay? What I've done here is made a pool of white, and I'm using my palette knife, and I'm gonna rake down and put stars in the sky. And I'll show you guys this in a second, but I wanna keep it flat. couple drips so I just went through and just dab it slightly so again keeping this flat the paint will gather here so if you angle it it'll drip so try to work fast and move it around as you go flicking stars get a nice organic approach to the stars, different sizes, and we can fill up that area instead of sitting here making dots for hours. If you guys are super prepared, you have a hair dryer handy, I'm going to dry this slightly. So when I flip this around, the stars won't run. dry enough so it creates a little thrust. If you guys got a big drip on there, you can dab it. It's going to create like a, a light purple glow. You can put a little small planet out there, a star, a shooting star, a little galaxy later, whatever you're feeling. So, any mistake you make, it's just a sign to create something else or add something. Flip this back around. Make sure we're lined up here. All right, technology is working. All right, so if you can see the stars on my painting, they're all different sizes. It's really hard for you to see the teeny tiny ones, but. It's a nice organic approach instead of sitting here spotting. Now for example, say later down the road I want to do a shooting star or a star, I'm taking the end of a small brush, I'm just dipping it in white so I have a little Hershey's Kiss at the bottom and I'm going to pick a spot for a star. Press and release press and release you can get two to three stars doing that but when you do this and try to do stars your brain always almost separates everything about an inch and it starts to look like a grid it just doesn't look right 
So always start with a very organic approach. You can put little constellations in if you want, like this. And we can work on this later, doing little finishing touches at the end. All right. But you can see here, there's a little blotch where I dripped paint by accident because I didn't have the right angle, and right here as well. I'm gonna grab my palette from before. And any little imperfections that were created during this process, you can dab with your brush again and hide anything that's bugging you. Okay. Oh, my palette's a mess already. I'm gonna switch palettes. If you guys want to grab another paper plate, it's a good time. We're gonna start working on the planet. Once again, if you if you use your fan brush, your angle brush, stencil brush to create the stars, clean them real good, set them aside so they're not all crusty later, and we can use them again. Also, I forgot to warn you, wherever your cup of water is in your napkin or your work area, keep your drink on the opposite side. I've ruined a lot of coffee and a lot of beverages. Dipping my brush in there, I'm sure someone's already done that. All right, 51 people are getting there. Okay guys, so now we're gonna work on another palette. Let me show you uh, last week's sample. So now we're gonna start working on the planet. I'm gonna try to put these in order for you guys. White, aqua, periwinkle, plum, neon purple, purple, and black. Okay, our tools for this section are ideally a half inch or three eighths fan brush, I mean a uh, angle brush, okay? What's great about these angle brushes is when you set them like this, they bend and make a nice clean line for you so you can stay with the line of the planet. Be right back guys, hang tight. In the meantime, for the palette, white, aqua, periwinkle, this one's called gray purple, but it's a light blue. If you have ultramarine, add some white to it. You can create this, it's like a dodger blue. Our neon purple again, or light purple, whatever you have. Violet, dark purple, and then black at the bottom. You're right back, guys. Eh? you guys take a peek at this it'll be darker later so we've created this glow now around the planet you can see the sample in the background okay All 
Alright, new plate, new color, white. Aqua. Periwinkle or light blue. If you have neon blue, it's a cool effect in the planet. If you don't, don't stress about it. Just make a little bit lighter blue by adding a white to your ultramarine or whatever blue you have. Plum, prism violet, dark violet or dark purple. This looks black, it is not black, it's purple. And a little bit of black. So you guys are going to be working with the angle brush. The longer you've been doing it, the larger brush you can use. You can use any of these right now. Start working on the plant. So make sure we're still rolling here. Oh yeah, Kristen, the purple is a uh, neon. If you don't have the neons, it's no big deal. But if you do have neon or fluorescent paint, it would just be like a special treat if you have the light later. All the same technique though. Now, I'm gonna take white. How are we doing? Summer. The Summer. key with these angle brushes and the back side, is that you load it flat like this. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that. Load it flat. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the brush I'm not crying. nice and like the knife's edge there. So, loading, we're not dipping it, we're loading it flat like this. Okay. Then you can make a thin line. Or you can drop the paint and then blend it like this. And I'm slightly angling the brush like this to blend. These uh, angle brushes are great. They're really versatile. You can get a really nice controlled line. You can also get a nice blend. So I'm going to start. I'm using my hand like a prism here. I mean like a, a compass. And I'm just going to go like this with a white. Trying to keep with our pencil line as best we can. Don't panic if you go outside of it. It's not going to be perfectly round. It's actually kind of cool if it's a little bumpy here and there. Just want it to have the appearance of being round. So it's hard to see what I'm doing because I'm just putting white at the top right now. Like so. And then. I'm gonna set the brush here and pull it in like this. So if you'll notice, when I'm here, the point on my brush is down. I'm setting it on the point out like this on the edge and then pulling in. When I'm on the right side, the point on my brush is up. I'm setting it here and pulling down like that. Okay, so we wanna fill this top part up with white. I'm just kind of pushing it around. Once I start the aqua, you'll see what we're doing here. Okay. We're not trying to create perfection right here. We're just doing the background colors for the planet. I have a technique to show you guys to make it look really cool. So right now I'm just doing white. I'm going to go aqua. I'm not cleaning the brush. Set this here like this, pull. Set this here like this, pull down. Okay. I'm using the angle brush to my advantage. I'm setting it on the 
pencil line and it bends nice and clean. Overlapping your white, creating our little beach ball effect here, okay? So setting the angle, pulling in. If you guys are having trouble with the larger angle brush, you could go a little smaller and just be a thinner line. Just pull in, be confident with the color, pull in like that. Left to right, right to left. Not cleaning the brush, going to periwinkle. So I'm loading the bottom of the brush for this one, and then I'm turning it and pulling it this way. So loading it flat, as you can see the brush is still got a nice thin point to it. This is a larger one. You guys are probably using a little smaller one, but Loading it like that, setting it on the pencil line, pulling in. And I'm overlapping the aqua, pulling in. Okay? Then we fill this in. Grab a little aqua here too, so we don't have real obvious line. even pull a little aqua into this section here. Just let it flow off the brush. If you're getting white specks on your C canvas, just grab more paint. And you guys can do any colors right now too. If you don't have the right colors, you can use the same color scheme as the sky and reverse it here. If you have reggae colors, light to dark, you have natural colors, light to dark. So I'm just putting the periwinkle in here. Like so. Come down pretty far. And then let it just leaf off the brush here. Like so. Okay. Now I'm using neon purple. It's this one here. Uh, you can create this with the plum. If you have pink to add to purple and white, you can. Or you could just go with your standard purple, whatever purple shade you have. Just work with it. Set the brush here, pull in. Set the brush here. Pull in. I'm gonna keep this arch happening here. Just give it an illusion of roundness. A little beach ball. And I'm overlapping each color. I'm also gonna throw a little neon blue in here just for fun later for the light. It's hardly going to be visible. This blue stage isn't necessary though if you don't have it. So, nice band of plum here. This part will glow. Setting the fan or the angle brush on the, on the line, on the pencil line. Pulling in, same process here, just kind of pulling it out. Now I'm going to go into the violet, a little darker shade, same thing here, pull in, set the brush, be confident, pull in. Same process here. If you can see the canvas a little bit through there right now, it's fine. The paint's going to go on a little thinner. This is our first coat on the planet. It's hard for me to interact with you guys because I have the camera regular, so we're not mirror imaged here. This is going to look black. 
but it's dark purple. Clean the brush. This one, the serious note. Set it aside. Still with the light at the end of the tunnel. This one entitled What a World. Are we still going? All right. All right. Well, we're getting there. No 27 minute Bob Ross painting, but we're getting there. Once you got to this point, I want to try to dry this so we can keep going. If you're feeling like going slower and you want to want to rewind it later, just take a break right now and then watch me and then catch up later. So I'm gonna have to keep up this quickly. I'm gonna dry this. I'm gonna dry our volleyball. Background's pretty much done. Later, if you want to put in a shooting star, a little shining star, we can. During this process, too, if you want to take the small brush, like this, and do a couple little stars here and there. Do some really obvious ones. I'm just tapping the end of the handle. So, trying this white aqua periwinkle, a little bit of neon blue, neon purple, violet, dark purple, black. So I just did black, purple here. For now, we're gonna put a little bit of black in at the bottom to create depth. But we're going to do that with our stencil brush. In the meantime, this brush we use for the sky. Get this pretty well clean and try to dry it as best as possible. And we're going to add some flare to the planet. If you like the way your planet looks right now, just leave it. And uh, you can learn a technique by watching the next step. You can join in if you want, but if you're feeling good about this and you want to leave it, no pressure. So I'm just trying to get this tacky so we're not pulling paint off the canvas on the next step. So now it's a nice thin angled strokes happening. But I like to go heavy and a lot of texture give the paintings more character. I started in oil, so I'm used to the, the thickness of it all. So, I use two to three times more paint than most artists, but it's just a, my style that I've adapted over the years. To get these bold colors and contrasts, I don't like to thin out the paint or soften it up at all. See how you guys are doing? We're still going. Get your own blow dryer. Sorry, hon. 
I already styled my hair before the, the show. The rich man, the poor man, the beggar man, the thief, everyone came the man is yeah. We're listening to Clinton Ferron. Cheers, Clinton. This one, the one for the road. Thank you so very much for coming and supporting the good vibe. Okay guys, we've dried this. Now I'm gonna use the stencil brush again. Same palette. And I'm gonna load the brush, but not real heavy, so tap it on your plate. You don't wanna bring a ton of paint to the canvas. I'm gonna thicken up this area here. I'm trying to stay in the circle. And bring a little arm down here. A little crater there. I'm starting with white so you can hardly see what I'm doing but working my way out. And I'm gonna create sort of an illusion of roundness here. I just tapped the brush on the napkin. I did not clean it. I'm gonna go to the aqua and I'm gonna start in the aqua and go both directions. So I'm gonna thicken up our aqua line here and work my way up. Leave a little line a little arm going that way. Now the key here is light on the paint, rotating the brush, different angles. So we're not leaving the same mark or spot or polka dot everywhere we go. Okay? We also don't want to take our line work away because that's creating the illusion of roundness behind what we're doing right now. Aqua come down a little, maybe a little random spot out, just floating. Touch a little light aqua here, soften this up. So we want to soften the obvious lines here, but we don't want to make them disappear completely, okay? Not cleaning the brush, I'm going to the periwinkle. Start where the periwinkle is and work your way up randomly. And a few down into the purple. Blend these colors, but don't take them out completely. A little bit up here. to the neon blue. If you don't have neon blue, a little darker blue, a little lighter purple, whatever you're feeling. Start in that line, same thing. A couple coming up. Bring that purple down, a little blue. Now I'm gonna go to the neon purple. I hope you guys are having fun. Really glad that I got the courage to make this happen. It's getting me to paint because I haven't been. And to my left, I have easily 120 paintings I have to finish. Five are crucial. So what we're doing is we're bringing that full color in here to where our stripe was and you can see the canvas through it. We're going to darken it up a little, see? I'll work my way up with a little arm here and there. Rotating, changing angle, tapping different pressures. There we go. really like this neon purple, so I'm kind of going heavy with it here. Haven't cleaned the brush. Now violet, same thing. Bring a couple down to the tape line. A couple up like this. A couple 
dark spots here and there, up in these lighter colors. If you want to do a face, that's cool. If you want to paint Elliot flying through a DT, that's cool. If you want to put a alien ship here, highly recommended. Whatever you're feeling. I went to the dark purple. I'm gonna make a little bit more obvious arms coming up. And I'm gonna try not to do the same angle twice. And if it gets real thick in a spot, you can just keep pushing it around. Heavy with the dark purple here. I'm very, very little light on the black. I want to wear it off on the palette or the plate first so you're not bringing a ton of black to the canvas. You get these corners here and a little bit on the horizon. Bring the arms up. A little black here and there. I like this transition, so I'm not going to put a big crater here. I'm just going to keep it simple. If you guys want to put a crater, a face, I recommend using dark purple and then lightening it up and then surround it with whatever color you have so it creates this illusion of crater. So we're looking pretty good. This is a somewhat advanced painting for a class, but even simple paintings can be difficult. So just, just take it one step at a time here. While you guys catch up, I'm just gonna hit a few spots that clean up the side edges. And If you're OCD and perfectionist. Change the music for you guys, let you catch up. You. I love that last hat you did. I wish I had the money, but I promise I'll pay it forward soon and get some dub sized gear. Let you guys catch up here. Show you the sample from last one. So you see where we're going. This is definitely not my gig. If you hand me a mic or put me in front of a camera, I'll kind of freak out. But I'm just happy to be painting with you all and I feel like I'm doing okay. So technology isn't failing us yet, which is awesome. What's up, Jeff? All right, the camera, the colors seem pretty good. All right, now you can use the same palette or plate that you have, or you can switch it. I'm gonna go for a freshie. Just so, cause I'm infamous for kind of blindly going to the palette and getting a wrong color. Our next step is going to be the islands. They're hard to see here because they came out a little dark. We're going to put islands on the horizon. So we're going to do use light green, dark green if you have it, and black. I'm using a neon green so the islands glow. 
uh, but you can use a light green, similar shade. You can use a lime green. You can throw yellow in there, neon yellow, whatever you're feeling. Okay. So, for this step, we're going to be using a smaller angle brush. Something along these lines to do the mountain. You've seen Bob Ross do mountains with palette knife, but these are a little smaller. And I have a pretty fun technique to give you a little more control. So, for our next step, we go greens. I'm going to use lime green, light green, neon green. Throw a little neon yellow in there. If you guys have sun yellow or light yellow, you can add that to the shaded parts of the mountain. Small amount of black. All right. Angle brush, tape line, still good. Planet's looking good. If you're a perfectionist, we're gonna put planet or islands in here. So if there's something that's bugging you here, fix it first. Keep an eye on what I'm doing and come come along and follow along later. So I'm just gonna use the light green here. And I'm gonna outline some islands. And I'm gonna fill it in down to the tape line. Okay. Pretty thick on the paint here. And then as you get to the tape line, taper it off. Okay. The key here is to not have a triangle, so kind of wiggle it. I've got the point of the brush up, like this, and I'm pulling down here and pulling down that way. I'm going to get a little bit of black, a little bit of black and bring it to my green pile. Start to create a transition color here. So I just created this little bit of darker green here. And we're just going to set up our island with black and green. And just work on the top edge and bringing the color down. So we're just worried about the shape of the island right now, whatever you want. You want one island, one all the way across, big one over here, little ones in the middle. If you put a little one, out here, it's going to look farther away, and this is going to give you the appearance of being wrapped around. So I'm going to put a little guy there. So I have an island tapered off here. Remember, when we peel the tape, it's going to be here up. I know it's hard for you guys to see this these islands happening here. Try to make it a little more visible for you. Light green and a little bit of black. I'm just setting up. I'll take this guy right off the edge. Why not? Fill that in. I'm gonna pick how the ridge is gonna look. So left side of the mountain I'm pulling down, right side I'm pulling this way. So I have a larger island here, it tapers out. A little bit of open space, little island here, a little space, another smaller island there. And then try to create a nice natural ridge by wiggling the brush like so. Just pulling down. See if 
if I can see what you guys are seeing here. Yeah, you can kind of see the islands happening. Yeah, we got the green going. All right. I'm gonna clean the brush. Clean that angle brush. If you guys are having trouble with the larger one, go with the smallest one. This guy here. A little more control. So I'll probably downsize a little bit just for the for the highlights. And I'm gonna add a little lime green and neon green. Assuming the light's coming from this side, this mountain is gonna have light here. This mountain's gonna have light here, and this mountain's gonna have light here. So I'm gonna set the brush here like this and pull down to the tape. And create this lighted line here. Create the ridge, set the brush, lightly pull down. Same thing here on this little guy. Add a little highlight here. Over here, we want the light on this side of the mountain. Pull down. Set it down, pull, very light touch, pull to the tape. Try not to get paint below the tape line. Create a cool little ridge. This is neon green, light green, touch of yellow. If you're not trusting yourself with the pulling method, you can place it here with an angle. You can place the color you want like this, by dabbing it. You get a little more control instead of doing this kind of thing. I'm gonna take a little bit of black over here and darken up the opposite sides. Just a little. This guy's kind of hard to see, so add a little green over here too. Just get the islands feeling cool. If you guys have painted before and you want to do another set of islands in front of that to create that depth, just do a little wiggle motion, put a smaller one in here. I like to keep it pretty simple. I'm going to add the water here later, so we don't need to get too fancy. This is out the distance anyway. Once you feel good about the mountains, you can uh, peel the tape. Yeah, we're still going. It's good. All right. Now, if you guys are feeling good about the islands, peel the tape. 
and just keep rolling with me. If you want to keep rolling with me, you can always add to your islands later. It's no pressure. We can fix things in the planet. We can fix things in the sky. But we're just working our way down. Keeping along with the art bag. Can you pull me down tonight? Can you pull me Roll that tape to itself, get it out of your way. We want to try to dry this as well. So we have the hair dryer. It's ideal to get this these islands dry. We get the islands dry so we can cheat and put tape across here so we can freestyle the bottom without worrying about keeping a straight line. Thanks for the beautiful hair dryer, Lisa. Matches our painting. During my regular classes, I try not to use a hair dryer. We have 22 people, 25 people, so it's almost impossible. Uh, we just take breaks, uh, work on techniques, help each other out, catch people up. I walk around and, and show people how to hold a brush, how to apply the paint. Something's bugging them, I'll paint on their canvas, kind of give them a demonstration, or I'll, I'll fix something if they have an issue. Be right back, guys. Forty-one people. You guys are all painting. That's crazy. Thanks for joining in. Appreciate you guys being here. This kind of thing's really hard for me, but we all have to adapt, and I'm just happy to be able to bring art to you guys and be able to continue what I love. Um, all my teaching is completely gone, so I really appreciate you guys and my virtual family here. Um, if you want to throw a gratuity down, a buck or two even helps. I have all the links in the uh, in the description of the live video later. Uh, a couple bucks to help. I'm going to pay a lot of that forward to musicians and other painters buying merch. Spent most of the week doing watching live feeds and trying to buy merch from my friends whose tours got canceled. And I hope everyone's doing well. Just got to ride this thing out and... I know most of us aren't working, so this is a good escape. I'm going to finish drying this, and we're going to start the bottom. And the idea of drying this is so we can cheat, and the bottom gets a little more fun and freestyle. I have a weird thing about straight horizons. I spent a lot of time on the ocean and on the water, so I just particularly like the clean line in the distance. Um, I 
mud painters will leave a gap here and do the water and then just pull the mountains out a little more organically. Uh, but I'll show you later how we can create that illusion of the mountains coming around. You can add distance by the shoreline and different techniques. All right. Get this dry, touch it. Seems to be fine. You can hardly see this island here, but take tape again. I'm gonna put tape across the top of our painting. And we don't wanna come into the white at all because when you pull the tape, you're gonna have a nice white line between your islands and your water. So leave a little bit of color showing below the tape line, all the way across. If this tape pulls some of your paint later on the mountains, it'll actually create a cool effect. Uh, it might pull a little bit, but we can fix it, okay? Mainly just put the pressure on the bottom part of the tape, like so. Now we're gonna work on this part. going to go a little faster as far as application goes. We're working on work on the water. Here's our sample from last week. Now this particular sample I left the water real thin and calm. Um, so we might do that. I'll show you the technique. Or you can add some impressionist strokes here and make it look more like a stormy day. A little more illusion as far as like natural impressionism or impressionism. So I'm using white. If your paint's still good from before, you can use it on your other palette. It's basically same five colors. Good time to clean your brushes, get a fresh cup of water, or use the cup of water that you did that you used with the stars that only has white in it. Okay, I'm gonna clean these. I'll be right back with a fresh cup of water, and we'll get going on the on the water. how long we've been going but I think we're doing pretty good time wise for as far as we're getting along. I like to use a roll of duct tape uh, around the cup of water or my drink so it doesn't spill because I tend to be sort of a little wild in the paint zone. Some of you, it's going to be hard for you to, to paint along with me here and see the technique. So if you haven't painted before, just watch what I do and then repeat and I'll give you a little time to catch up. If you have painted before, you can just listen to me and, and do your thing and peek up now and again. So we're going to go really fast. So I'm going to go white here. 
you guys have never painted before, just, just watch. And then follow suit. Very good amount of paint here. I just did white. Either side, aqua. Not cleaning the brush. Surrounding it in aqua. Lots of paint, lots of paint. Don't worry about how it's going on the canvas. Periwinkle. Surround it, periwinkle. And now you guys see why we have that tape there, so we can just free flow this. Periwinkle, lots of, lots of paint. Nice and thick. Subtle triangle happening here, see this? Okay. Neon blue if you have it. Not necessary though. Just kind of blends into this particular color. Gives us a little glow. Violet. Okay. Violet. Keeping this subtle triangle happening. Dark purple. Dark purple. Okay. Now, I'm cleaning the brush. I'm gonna dry it off a lot. It's an angle brush, like this. If you guys just have a square brush, that's fine. Clean it, a little moisture is fine. We're gonna blend this. Don't worry about how it turns out. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my brush. Touch of aqua, okay? I'm just gonna blend this out. I'm not gonna lift my brush. I'm just gonna go back and forth. Back and forth. Seems weird we just blended all those colors together, okay? But this is a nice way to, to do impressionism. You're gonna have a decent amount of paint on the sides of your canvas right here, where your brush drags, so you can take it off with your finger or with your brush and reuse it on your palette. So, we've blended out the water. What's up, Mary? How you doing, Frank? Christina, I bet yours is looking good. You've had some practice. All right. So, using that method, we've created a light glow here. A little bit of white, a touch of aqua. We pulled all those colors together, but it's still darker here, lighter here. If you have the luxury of the hair dryer, I want to dry this part again. to my left so I can interact with everyone, answer questions. So I'm drying this blended part. If you have brush marks in here, it's because you're doing this. Just force yourself not to lift the brush. Blend this out and then dry it. generally recommend going heavy with a drying tool, a heat gun, or a, a blow dryer, but in order for this not to take forever, you have to cut a few corners. It's better to be patient, just let the paint cure, but it's still going to be fine. It's just nice to be patient, let the paint do its thing. And as long as uh, 
you have the discipline to get back on the painting and get it most of the way done. guys a quick little tutorial on the impressionism. Ideally for this next part you want to use an angle brush in this size here. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not real technical. This is a 3 8 half inch. You kind of see the size here. experience you have the larger brush you can use. What we want what we're gonna be doing here is some impressionism in the water. And we want to load the brush flat both sides. Hold line. We want to leave a little dash like this. Okay, if you want to blend you can do this. We've already done the blended background, so we want to add light by just doing little small strokes like this and overlapping them. We're going to create the water using this method. Light in the middle and dark as we work our way out. straight line. So once I got to this point, I'm going to peel the tape so we can see what we got. All right. Now our whole canvas is covered in paint. This thumbs up there. All right, Jessica. Yeah, it's hard to keep up. Um, but you can just watch the replay, take a break. You can watch the techniques that I'm doing next. Um, and that way, you've already kind of got a sample in your mind about where to go with it. And you can just keep going with it. So I'm not going to get real fancy here. Um, sometimes I'll spend about two hours just on the water doing this kind of thing to get the right distance, light, and color combination. But I'm just going to run through a little sample for you guys. I'm barely touching the canvas. I'm loading this brush flat keeping a sharp point, barely touching the canvas, 
I'm right-handed and generally left to right for me is a better feel. If you guys are feeling it better going right to left, just make sure the point is to the right when you're going this way. And when you're going left to right, the point is on the left going this way. Then you lift up and it'll create a nice thin line. Very, real finesse game here. Make a little periwinkle. Box that in. Maybe have a little wave right here, or maybe another one right there. Periwinkle. Some neon blue. And as you do this, the painting will kind of slowly come to life and tell you where the color needs to go. If you want to make it stormy, you get a little wiggle going. If you painted before and you like have a certain water style that you dig, just go with that. Right. Now I'm gonna get a little to the darker colors. So it'll, you'll be able to see this triangle starting to happen. Like I said, I am a lot more comfortable going left to right. So I've adapted my touch over here so I don't leave too thick of a line on the inside. Loading the brush flat. If it starts to get clumpy, clean it, dry it, and start your next color. At the end, I'll get the black light out to show you guys what this looks like. I just want to get this water in the happy state before we put anything on the front because it's really hard to work this line work again once you put the forefront on there. So if you guys can see, I've got that darker purple going. Now we're still uh, still rolling, happy. For the first try, I thought, I think I worked out the kinks yesterday. Dark purple on the outside. Create this subtle triangle. Yeah, I've got this happening here, a little darker on the outside. dark that you can get on the horizon to the point the farther this will look away and I'm gonna get pretty bold here with a little black but very little on the sides just to draw your eye into the middle so I'm doing like this method here tapping to the edge of the canvas and then little longer lines here shorter lines here to keep this triangle happening Same thing here, I'm gonna go this way. I 
I'll give you guys some tips on edging the canvas as well so it'll look cool on the wall. Uh, but we'll do that at the end. I'll give you a little sample. So getting this triangle happening longer lines here to the horizon. A little shorter as we come out this way. Okay. Alright. I'm going to show you guys in a darker color first our next step. Give you a second to uh, catch up here. See what it looks like. Uh, colors look pretty good on there. <clears throat> okay, for our next step, we're gonna put the shoreline on the island. I'm gonna do that with white. It's really hard for me to show you with white. So I'm gonna show you with a darker color here. If you have a fan brush, that's ideal. You wanna get it wet. I'm gonna load the brush to where it doesn't look like a comb anymore. Okay.
guys. Now we're gonna do the same technique we did with the mountains with the land in the front. <laughs> So our next step is the cliff and the trees. I'm gonna hit it with the dryer a little bit. Keyboarder for stick figure, his solo project is really solid. So this next step, you're gonna need black and white. I suggest getting some fresh black and some fresh white. Okay. And we're gonna do the same technique we did with the mountains, except we're gonna make a little cliff here. So I'm gonna just. Pick a little spot here and create a clip. So first work on the top line, getting it pretty clean, pulling off the bottom of the canvas like so. I'm going to fill this completely in with black. I forgot to mention you guys at this point, if you have an easel, try to bring your canvas out so the lip is in front of the rail here. So you can free flow off the canvas like this instead of hitting that wooden rail. So I'm just going to create my little cliff here. Filled that in with black, but not real heavy. Just fairly thin. Put another one in here. Try not to make it the same, but similar is fine. This one I'm not going to go off the side. Oh, maybe I'll just go off here. Fill this in with black. Without cleaning the brush, we go into the white, pretty heavy. Not super heavy, but a decent amount of white. I'm gonna create a couple of ridge lines here. So I'm gonna set the fan brush or the angle brush. The points to the left. I'm gonna pick a spot on the ridge here and pull down. Like so. Wiggle a little. And then I'm gonna Black. Pull down lightly like this. And add some gray tones. A little bit of wiggle on the brush. I wipe the brush and then I'm going to separate these little areas with black. A little bit of wiggle happening. 
using the point of the brush too here and there. The texture is real nice here. So don't be afraid to go heavy on the paint here. Same thing here, points to the left and I'm going to pull down like this. And slowly lighten it up. A wiggle here and there. Wipe the brush, come back to black. Separate those little sections. And if you're not super happy with this cliff, don't panic because you got you can come back and work on it. Use a little tiny brush. What's up, Irene? I hope you're feeling better. You see that cliff in the front pretty good. It's hard to tell. Alright, now we have the cliff in. I'll start working on the trees. So for the tree, for the tree we've got these three options here. I'm using a larger one. Um, this little 3 8 angle brush is cool. Or you have a little tiny one. So if you guys can't do a controlled line. Do a little tree sample for you. I'm gonna pick a little tree here and loading that small angle like this. So with the angle brush here, there's two techniques: light pressure, and you work your way down and add pressure to create the tree. Or heavier pressure, and you work your way up and lift up and out.
we're making this one a little more creepy. I'm gonna add some more branches here. Somebody tag Josh. Thanks uh, everyone for the musical inspiration. If I am not painting with music, it's a little awkward. So just, just working on these trees. You don't want them to be the same height. You don't want them to have the same branch structure. So try to let your brain just kind of freestyle it. working your way up on a branch and you make a little mistake with the paint, it just make a little branch there. We'll put these trees six feet apart for social distancing. But make them grow. Lots of little branches. Don't panic if each branch isn't perfect because we're going to put the shrubbery on here and cover up a lot of our work anyway. But it's all good practice and technique to carry on to the next painting when you're freestyling. So I'm not sure if you can see those fine lines, but I'm just adding branches, going different directions, wiggling the brush. You can also use a script brush here. Trees are hard, so don't get discouraged. Just keep trying different brushes and find a technique that works for you if you're struggling with the, the branches. So I'm just putting different. Smaller and smaller as we go up. So I'm just branches here. Phone hasn't died. Looks like we're still going. Thank, thank you all for uh, joining in. I hope everyone's having fun who's painting along. I have the trees pretty much wrapped up, and I'm going to add the shrubbery. If you guys are still working on the trees, just stop for a second. I'm going to show you a little technique for doing the branches. I'm going to go back to the fan brush. And we're gonna load it with a light green to where there's not separation, so it doesn't look like a comb. So fairly well loaded. This is about I don't know, probably number one fan brush. I don't really keep up with all the technical jargon. Just gonna load it with light green. It'll come along here.
happening, a little down. Change the angle of the brush. I'm gonna add a little bit of black in here and overlap. To create some depth in the shrubs. Very little black though. It's gonna look like we're taking our work away. It's okay. Little light little taps with the fan brush. Okay. Let's put a little shrubbery right here on this branch too. dry a sec. If you have the luxury of a blow dryer, go for it. If you're not happy with your clips, you can dry them right now and then come back and add black and white. A little more control. I'm gonna dry the shrubbery a little bit. again for painting episode one called to Ross. I think we're doing pretty good for our first try being as low tech as we are. I have my phone blue taped to a bottle of paint on a raggedy old ladder and it seems to be working. So you guys can work on the toughest thing is when you come back to a painting like this, this, if you want to work on the water, you can work on it, but freestyle through the tree branches once it's dry and then bring the tree back. So, while this is drying, I'm going to wait to add another layer. With the angle brush, or your little tiny brush, we want to put some light line on the tree. So assuming the light's coming here, on the right tree we want the white highlights on the left. On the left tree we want the white highlights on the right. So I'm gonna do this kind of thing. I'm gonna wiggle. Get a little. Little highlights. Still pulls for us. Little highlights here and there. Give these branches a little depth. On this side, predominantly on the right. Work our way down. Wiggle it a little. If the white goes on too heavy, just clean your brush. And come back with black. And you can also create a subtle gray line next to it. give the tree some nice dimension. In a painting like this, I'd probably spend another solid hour on, just perfecting things, but, you know, we just keep the flow. We always want to try to get 80 to 90% done and then give it some fresh eyes, take a break, and come back. So now I'm just gonna brighten up the shrubbery, 
I'm gonna add a little lime green here and there and make it a little more wild. A little neon green if you have it. Extend those out a little, add some points going down, a couple up in the air. Lighten the guys up. It's hard to tell on the camera, I'm sure, but those neon colors in our initial layer of the shrubbery, once it dries, it fades out a lot. All your colors are gonna dry 20% darker than what you see on the palette. So sometimes it can be a little disappointing and you wanna come back, add highlights, bring that true color back if you do a second coat you can really get that yellow or green or whatever you're looking for to pop so if you guys have yellow if you want to do white up in here you can too um, and that'll add real nice contrast Cool, huh? yep. Yeah, you can see the neon blue in the water, <clears throat> the green islands, all your white will go ivory. It's tough to see on camera, but this white will go ivory. And uh, like a light purple. So, yeah, pretty good, thanks for painting everyone. Thanks for joining in. I uh, will definitely have some more classes, hopefully on Instagram and YouTube as well. So, 
So uh, thank you for joining in. I appreciate it. And uh, <laughs> the inaugural students, Bold Ross. Thanks for being episode here. one. Thanks for painting with me. Everybody, stay safe out there. Stay positive. If you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to uh, feel free to message me, comment on the post. I'll answer all your questions. If you guys want to work on something and you need some tips, some ideas, just let me know. You've got a lot of free time. I'm literally just going to be painting every day. And uh, I'll try to organize another uh, event soon. I hope you guys can paint with me. Uh, most likely I'll try to keep it in the similar color scheme so you're not out buying more paint at the moment. Um, but I'm thinking about possibly doing a wave. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Keep an eye out on the event page. Thanks for painting with me. Sending love out from the Shoal fam from San Diego. Thank you guys. See you soon. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh and wait. The, the no, links. Wait. There's wait. more. <laughs> There's links if you'd like to tip or donate. We'd really appreciate it. It's just gonna go to supplies. And I'm gonna pay a lot of that for to musicians and other artists. Oh, there it is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Have a great evening. <laughs>